Hello, I am Dr. Chris McGuera from Warsaw, Indiana, and I am running for the United States House of Representatives from the 3rd Congressional District of Indiana. Every day, the career politicians and the massive administrative state that they support are infringing upon your God-given natural rights and liberties. In addition to life, liberty, property, and freedom of religious expression, there is the right to defend these rights to the best of your ability. The political race that I have entered will be decided in the Republican primary election in May 2020. I will be challenging the incumbent, Representative Jim Banks, for the 3rd District Congressional seat. Naturally, people want to know what I have to offer, what I believe in, what are my positions on the issues, and how do I differ from the incumbent. Since I am not currently, nor have I ever been, an elected office holder, comparisons are likely to begin with the voting record of my opponent. For this discussion, I would like to concentrate on the Second Amendment issues and the closely related Fourth and Fifth Amendments. It was shown in a previous presentation that Jim Banks has demonstrated some challenges with the Second Amendment by virtue of his yes vote on the Fix-Nix Act. This seeming disregard for those rights is now compounded by his 621-19 co-sponsorship of H.R. 838, Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019, TAPS Act. At only nine pages, the act is easy to read, but after reading it, you will believe that you have entered an Orwellian universe of unbelievable dysfunction, where there is actually being established the infrastructure for a pre-crimes unit right out of a sci-fi movie plot. And we have seen this movie before. Noted constitutional lecturer, Chris Ann Hall, described it this way in one of her recent posts, and I quote, the unlimited and arbitrary authority this act bestows upon a bureaucracy of 24 people, combined with the language of doublespeak and contradictions creating loopholes allowing completely unsupervised and unchecked authority is reminiscent of the Sedition Act of 1789, end quote. She goes on to state, again quoting, this act on its face violates the Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, and Eighth Amendments, end quote. It also has the potential to violate the 1st, 2nd, 7th, 9th, and 10th Amendments, depending upon its implementation. This leaves me absolutely speechless. How can it be that such an unconstitutional bill is being co-sponsored by a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, who, according to Article 6, Section 3, and I quote here, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, end quote. Unbelievable. And in a related manner, Jim Banks was quoted in an August 20th, 2019 WANE.com article as saying, and here I quote, it's questionable whether or not red flag laws work. But Indiana has one, and we can judge whether or not they're effective from that. End quote. So, how do you ask, do I compare to this? First, I have absolute faith in the Constitution and will vote according to the original intent, understanding, and meaning of the Founders' Constitution 
100% of the time. Those who do not embrace constitutional liberty must be compromised by either pragmatism, malice, or lack of knowledge. The prime directive of all members of Congress should be to first consider the constitutionality of a bill, not its utility. Allow me to repeat that. If elected to Congress from the 3rd District of Indiana, I will be duty-bound to always consider constitutionality over utility. Always. Not being a career politician, I will be free from pressure from special interests and party leadership. So this coming May, I ask you to secure your God-given natural rights and liberties. Vote for the Constitution Solution. Vote for Dr. Chris McGarrah for Congress in 2020. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, or share. I'm Chris McGarrah, and I approve this message. Paid for by friends at Chris McGarrah, Incorporated.